You couldn't ignore me if you tried. But I'd like to dedicate it to a young man who doesn't think he's seen anything good today. A million dollars isn't cool. You know what's cool? Elder hey, guy! Welcome into Biopic. I'm your host, Dylan, here on the Dylan Berry Network. Gosh, that's a lot of Dylans. It's been a while, but this is Biopic. This is a show I do here uh, on this channel, uh, on this network, where I talk to my favorite people about our favorite movies. And um, had many guests. It's, it's Again, it's been a while. But um, we, got, we got a very special guest on the show that I'm introducing in a second. But we, together, we're going to talk about... Oppenheimer, one of the biggest movies of the year, of ever, potentially. Um, we're going to talk Oppenheimer. We're going to talk top five Christopher Nolan movies, which is hard to do. But we landed what top five could go with it. Um, and there's no one better to do that with than the person who I experienced Barbenheimer with. And that's Julian Coffey. Did, did I pronounce that right? Yes, you did. Julian, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Julian, uh, you and I, we used to work together. Yes. We were uh, cubicle mates. You uh, were constantly the person who I was talking movies with. Constantly. Mm -hmm. And so, I I mean, even from the moment we started chatting movies, I was like, man, this guy would be a good biopic guest. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, like, what started your love of movies? I mean, I know that's kind of a weird, open-ended question, but I mean, you're... You you've you've been in video editing. You're mm -hmm. you I have a clear appreciation for movies. Where where does that come from? Where did that start? Well, my mine's like my journey. Like it, it it was a relatively long one. Like it wasn't like I just one day just like oh I just love movies. It was a slow process. Like it was I first started in high school. I took like some video production courses on like learn the basic. Started watching some classic movies. You know, just started the game gain a greater appreciation for the craft. When were you watching classic movies? Because classic movies can be hard to watch sometimes because they're not as exciting as... I, I should probably call it... So classic movies were like like the classic slashers, like oh, okay. probably, like Halloween, Boom. Friday the 13th, yeah. like, um, like the like famous 80s movies. Yeah. Like, um, it's going to like Fit Ferris Brewer's Day Off. Yeah, stuff, oh, yeah, stuff like that. Language. And I took um, a film history course as an elective in college, wow. and that's when like it really started. Where I learned like the first like how they first started out and the gradual transition to sound and then color and all this other you know crazy stuff. Wow. So was uh did you see Babylon? I did. Yes. Okay, so Babylon, pretty film history. It feels like a film history yeah. class itself. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that movie? I know it's. Like, it was. It was it was long. It was long. Was it a good um, representation? Would you say of like the yes. filmmaking story arc of yeah, like when they're all in those tents and stuff, and they're just jumping set to set like crazy, and then yeah, yeah. slowly the sound yeah. the sound scene, which was crazy and incredible. Yeah, or even like it's the towards the end when he walks into the theater, and it's that transition. Yeah, and all of a sudden I see Avatar. Yeah, where I'm like, yeah, yeah, true, like, true, yeah, the <laughs> like, whole like <laughs> montage that like. Looks like it was made on YouTube or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so that, that that was clearly like a love layer of the Hollywood, like the whole process. Yeah. So that's cool. What mm -hmm. um and then what about that class did it for you? Like was there a specific movie you guys discussed or Yeah, it was I learned about um German expressionism, which is a f art movement in the nineteen thirties. It, it was all about like having the world reflect the inner feelings of the characters like if they're like insane it's all like discombobulated and like disjointed and we watched um a famous one called the cabinet of dr caligari hmm. it was all it's like it's it's black and white but then it's like it's color but it's all like one color to help convey an emotion wow and this guy is telling this story about this mad doctor who comes in the town with this um I think it's it's in a, in an in imbobulus, I think mm. it's how you say it, where it's this person who like they're constantly asleep and he awakes and he tells prophecies and Whoa. all this you know other crazy stuff happens. Dang. So that, yeah, that, that's that wild. Was, yeah, that was that was the first one. That's crazy. And then did you grow up in L.A.? Like, no, no, I'm I'm from I'm from the East Coast. Oh, okay. So and I, we've and through my dad's job, we've just slowly moved across the country. Nice. 
And then, so when you landed or ended up in LA, I don't know how long that was. Did you think like, oh, I maybe want to make a career out of this, or like? Yeah, it was about three, four years ago now, where it was like I just graduated college. It was actually during COVID. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I've, wow. yeah, I, I've always had a passion for this stuff. I'm in the heart of it. Might as well yeah. try. Yeah, and you know, I, I managed to kick it off. Nice. So. You have a an interesting um, letterbox thing that you do. I, I think it's right. funny. Everyone letterbox says differently. Yeah. But sometimes you'll watch a movie and you won't log it. Yeah. So <laughs> what's up with that? Because for me, if I catch a movie halfway through, it's on TV or my roommate's watching it, yeah. I won't log it. Yeah. If I fall asleep during a movie, I won't log it. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's like, you know, one that I'm just turning on to pass out. But like, you'll watch a movie. Like we went and saw Indiana Jones in the yeah. Dial of Destiny, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Man, I, I wonder what." And I didn't, of course, maybe ask you directly. You yeah, think of that movie, but you don't usually ask your friends, "Hey, out of five, what do you what do you think of that one?" <laughs> but with Letterboxd, we get that. Thank you, Letterboxd. Mm-hmm. But you no, don't well, log it, certain ones. What, are you above it, dude? What is no, it? No, I'm not. I'm not very. It's just I just if I don't care about the movie, I'm not. I'm not gonna go on my log it. Like I, I this really, I guess. A silly system where I never rate anything below a three, because if it's if it's if it's below a three, I'm not I'm I don't think it's worth talking about. Like okay. It, like it, it's kind of. Like, but see, like I kind of get that. Yeah, and and I I could see the argument where it's like we didn't talk about bad films too, but I'm like, it's just if I don't feel like it's something I want to talk about, then I won't I won't log it. Yeah, I actually I get a little insecure about my uh, my letterboxed bar where mm-hmm. it shows like your average ratings. Yeah. Because I'm like, dude, it looks like I only watch good movies. Which <laughs> I mean, look, I don't want to watch a bad movie. Yeah. And but if someone wants to recommend a movie, and like honestly, when when reviews are bad on a movie that I was curious about, mm-hmm. I won't see it. I, like, it's just too much time with the trailers and Nicole Kidman and yeah, you know, all that stuff. It takes too long. It's a huge process. And, um, yeah, so, like, I, I, I agree avoiding bad movies is important, but I also feel like you got to have that balance. Yeah, no, like I mean, it's, just, it's just it's just a personal thing for me. Like, you can, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, well, but. sometimes, you know, it, well, now you can tell us what you thought of Indiana Jones. It was, it was a, it was, mm. it was sad. Was it <laughs> top five no, Indiana no, Jones uh, movie? No, it was not. There's top been five. five of them made. This would be the bomb. Like I, I would put that below Crystal Skull. Whoa, really? See, I, I would. Oh, act, mm. I think it's above Crystal Skull. I, okay, I, I. But I, I have a pretty uh, regular. No, I, I take that back. Crystal Skull's at the bottom. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crystal, you maybe you gotta. Re- I started to rewatch it, and I was like, dude, I don't yeah. even think I can do it. I had flashbacks to Shia LaBeouf swinging through the jungle. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> the thing is, is like the Shia LaBeouf dude. I think that was the right casting at the time. That's when he was doing Transformers, and he was like yeah. breaking and whatever. But it's just such a. No, I I am, I generally blame the actor last for a role. I'm I always blame the director first because mm-hmm. yeah. like they are in charge, and it's it, it is their job to bring out. The good performances of of, yeah. of of an actor, and I know he can act. Yeah. So it's just it's it was a combination of script and probably just. Bad yeah, directing. dude, we're in like a weird time with movies right now, mm-hmm. um, because like I mean, movies haven't been around that long. I think that's what kind of Babylon made me realize is just like yeah. holy crap, like we live in the one moment in time where like movies are like still mind blowing to us, still mm-hmm. whatever. But like we're in. I think maybe the last 10 to 15 years, maybe, but like the cash grab era of movies of like, let's redo these trilogy, like re like remakes and yeah. like, tr- like definitely I think that gets exhausting when people are like, stop remaking movies. But, but then you realize, oh my gosh, the biggest movies this year were all sequels or remakes or yeah, seven, you know, John Wick four or Top Gun or not Top, well, even Top Gun was a, a sequel. Yeah. But Mission the- Impossible. Freaking Indiana Jones, uh, Transformers, Fast yeah. and Furious. Yeah, Fast and Furious Ten. I guess Spider Man. Like, that was. I mean, even like yeah, yeah. even Barbie and Oppenheimer. Those are from a book or from a toy. Like yeah. those aren't. Ori- that's why. Like when in everything everywhere all at once comes out, I'm like, dude, we need to champion this movie. Like we need to be excited about it because it's like I'm a, there, I'm aren't, not, there aren't there are, there aren't. You know what I mean? Original things that are being made. Even yeah. Dune, which we can talk about, is like I mean that came from a book too. Like we know the we know these stories, and it is yeah. cool that they get told different ways. But 
I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm gonna be honest. I I never saw it everywhere anywhere all at once. But no, I I've heard it's great, and I'll probably watch it someday. It was yeah. the same thing. Like I I didn't watch Parasite till I oh, watched the Parasite Oscars, and I'm like, what what is this movie that everyone's talking about? It was it was it great? No, like it, yeah, it, uh, it was great. Gosh, yeah, yeah. Both um, those movies are fantastic. But like, I went and saw Theater Camp, uh, independent movie about yeah. like made for nothing it made like 700,000 in its first week mm-hmm. fox searchlight and like it was so refreshing and so great that it wasn't like oh like yeah there were no easter egg endorphins flying off or whatnot it was just like yeah. oh this is a new story new world yeah. kind of fun but I mean, idea the original movies i watched um talk to me like, like oh like, yeah. like a month ago so i'm thinking about seeing that and yeah. like do you watch i think it was raku raka it was like a youtube channel back in the day like i like these guys making like dumb like Lord of the Rings versus Star Wars movies were just like effects yeah. heavy stuff and like that was that was their movie. That's crazy, yeah. And it, it's gotten pretty 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 well pretty good reviews. Yeah, it's it's nuts to yeah, see kinda people we saw come up on the internet end up mm-hmm. in movies or yeah, like I mean, I'm big I talk about Bo Burnham a lot. He's one of my favorite artists ever. Oh, and yeah. he, he made eighth grade, which I don't know, a lot of people did see, didn't see. Mm-hmm. But like that was a really, really great and it won the the SAG, the screenwriters, like, okay. uh, screenplay of the year that year. So all the writers in Hollywood said that was the best scripted movie was from the kid who played piano in his room mm-hmm. and can, now directing yeah. movies. Yeah. Um, but, how yeah. Many, how many movies has he has he been in? Because I feel like I've seen him in something, but I can't put my... Yeah, he's uh, he's been in a lot. He was in Promising Young Woman um, not too long ago. He was in The Big Sick, um, Funny People. No. Uh, yeah, he's in yeah, he's kind of a couple of random things. Okay. Uh, but he does you no know, stand-up specials. Yeah, Inside is pretty good. If yeah, you, th- that was that was genius. Yeah, Inside like, was that was him and. I mean, yeah. that 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 does mean like I I, I didn't like. I was productive during pandemic. By <laughs> right. that, I'm like, I was not productive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard someone else. That. I I recommended it to someone recently, and they're like, you know what? That's honestly like, I can't really go back to that right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I like we. It still feels like we just got out of that. So I don't want to be locked yeah. in some room with some some yeah. dude going I heard nuts. He, but I saw that Netflix like twelve million dollars, but I can't I can't confirm that number. It's possible. It's mm-hmm. it's funny. He like yeah. There's a weird thing with Bo Burnham where he's like kind of you know anti all these kind of big crazy ideas but then he's like get my special at Target <laughs> and you're like oh yeah. all right. well, like, well, still the, part of the system are they all, are they all on, on Netflix are they, are they um, insides on Netflix and then I think the outtakes or just full insides on YouTube as well okay but yeah um, the one thing we always do on biopic is we get into people's desert island movies mm-hmm. rattle them off and everyone takes it a little differently, which I like, because some people, they come on here, and I'm a big fan of actually, like, the prompt is what you make it. And so, Desert Island, whatever Desert Island situation you want to be in. And some people, they pack in the genres, they pack in certain, ac- they pack in favorite movies, mm-hmm. they pack in length. So, I'm always curious how people break it down, how they go through it. Was it hard making this list? Let me ask you. Only, only figuring out my top my the last one because like i mean I, I grabbed like my fourth from my box nice. and I, I was uh, trying to think of like a fifth one nice but top five i was stuck on an island only had five movies first one alien alien wow okay so yeah. alien great movie classic we were just talking before we started rolling mm-hmm. that the last voyage of the demeter mm-hmm. i read a demeter yes it's the yeah, demeter um the Dracula movie, <laughs> which I read a funny headline that was like the second Dracula movie to flop this year because Nick Cage was in one. Yeah, the, that, that didn't surprise <laughs> me at all. <laughs> with uh, Nicholas Holt or whatever. Yeah. And um, yeah, someone described that movie as alien but on a wooden ship. Yeah, and in, in some ways it's like that. It's the claustrophobia. They can't like they can't leave. Yeah. Um, and it's the creature that they they try and flush out, and you know, one by one they. You know, okay. spoilers, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. So why, so yeah. why Alien? Why do you want Alien on your island? It was actually like one of the movies I watched in high school that got me into like the love of movies. I think like I watched the first one on a Saturday, and I watched like the next, like the whole franchise, like in like one day. Wow, just one after another. Like mm-hmm. obviously, like after Aliens, it 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 dives terribly in quality, but it was just it was just cool, and a large part of it is. Like I really like the story behind it. 
just how it was made and hr geiger is was an absolute genius in terms of like an artist and the design of the nostromo is just like i'm a fan of retro sci-fi yeah like like, so like stuff like star wars blade runner like dune like yeah well dune's more D- dune's still pretty futuristic it's, it's not like run down mm. like like rickety w- looper Never seen Looper. Ooh, okay. Well, then that's a good one for you to yeah. watch. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll add it to the list. But um, yeah, I, I watched it and I was just blown away. Just yeah. like like the Xenomorph and just, and like the reveal of Ash is like an android. Yeah. It was just it was mind blowing. Yeah. The uh, I watched Alien um kind of when I was also like diving into movies. Like when I was like, you know what? Like you can just watch like study movies, and that was one that you stumble upon is horror sci-fi is mm-hmm. like jump scares even like even uh, like just the idea like when you see alien you see all the movies that you've seen in your life and you go wait i've seen this type of like build to a scare before or like yeah you don't see the monster for so long well and like even then like they're very good at keeping in the shadows because like it, it does look kind of ridiculous if you yeah. just like put it in a bright room right but it's yeah, they short very minimally in shadow, yeah. and it's a lot of cutting to characters' reactions of it. I mean, yeah. like there's the famous Dallas is in the air events, and he's trying to evade it, and you see it, and it's it's, it's the jazz hands where it sticks his hands out mm-hmm. like this. Yeah, but and but it like it paved the way. So like every yeah, it's like your horror movie's favorite horror movie type thing. Yeah, but of okay. course, Alien. That's a little uh scary, but. Uh, w- w- okay, well, uh, I have a question for you, though. What, do you like Aliens or Alien? Uh, I've only seen Alien. I yeah? need to see okay. Aliens, which I know people say Aliens might be better. I, I, I always disagree. Okay. I, I, I can understand why, because it's, it's faster paced in Aliens. It's sci-fi action. Yeah. It's not sci-fi horror. And, and it's more quotable in terms of, like, Bill Paxton's one-liners. Nice. Old so, Bill Paxton. But, All right. Uh, what's your second one? The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. Wow, Pattinson and Defoe. Yeah. Dang. Mm-hmm. Uh, get a get a new entry. I like yeah. it. You gotta... and, yeah, it's uh, Robert Eggers. He's one of my favorite up and coming directors. Like yeah. uh, I saw The Witch. I didn't see The Loved Witch. Loved it. Too. Um, the Northman as well. I yeah. Lo- I love that one too. But wow. it's again another one. It's um it's the, it's the set design. It's that you're gonna go crazy on this island, dude. Like I am. those those are <laughs> like um, but no, yeah, like. Yeah, go on. Yeah, Why it's, you love the movie? Um, it's the set design. It's even like, because I, I read a story about how, how they made it. it. They shot in Nova Scotia, which is off the coast of Canada. Yeah. They built the exterior set from scratch because they, they, they couldn't find like any, like no place for it to look. And they chose lenses that have that, weren't, that were used back in the 1930s because like, he wanted like the old-timey look. Like it, It's more boxed ratio. Yeah. And it's based off a, a myth, I think, from Wales of two lighthouse keepers named Thomas, and they were found dead, and like no one knows why. Just wow. and, and again, he was having a conversation with his brother over dinner before the uh, witch came out, and he was having trouble finding it. And his brother told him about it, and he's like, "Well, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it." Hmm. And then the witch was a success, and you know, the rest is history. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Have you revisited that one a lot? Because I only saw it once in theaters, and it like it stuck with me for like a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's definitely one I'd like to revisit. But yeah, um, have you seen it a couple times or just? I watched it four times that year. Wow. Um, really blew it, you away. Yeah, and then, but I don't think I've watched it since then. I yeah. probably should. Yeah. But. Yeah, no, that one's uh, that one's pretty crazy. That's like mm-hmm. that I saw race. Uh, I saw it nearby. I should say. Um and yeah, I had no expectations for that movie, and even with expectations, there's just like kind of a lot of craziness that goes on. Yeah, I know. And like, can... and that's I think the great part about A24. It's an A24 movie. Yeah, it is yeah, is that like they do let directors kind of just go crazy and do whatever yeah. the bleep you want, and yeah. that's that's sick. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let those creators let them let them cook. What's yeah. your third? My third is. The Green Knight. The Green Knight. Yeah, another, right. yeah, yeah. another, another A24 film. Dang, do some recent stuff. I don't know. I like it. So why? I mean, I had a good time with The Green Knight. Mm-hmm. I thought it was uh, solid. I was anticipating that one for a while, too. Like, I, it was on my radar, and when, I knew when it was coming out, and I knew it was probably not going to be out for long. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, why do you want it on your island? Well, it was so I, th- I found out about it through an, an Instagram ad. It was some video explaining like the history of it. It yeah. was like super quick and it was all like stylized. I'm like, what is this movie? Like, I gotta see it. And uh, it's, I think it's David Lowry was the director. I think I might be like wrong on that, but it, it it's his use of color throughout the film. Mm. Like it's very like a lot of bright yellows and greens, and reds. Yeah. And then I I also just like the story where it's it's based off a I think 13th century um, English poem. Oh. It's a uh, from like a, an Arthurian legend, which is King Arthur, and it's his nephew Gwyn, and he has to go on a a quest to prove his basically his his manhood, which yeah. is like the five yeah. night night nightly virtues, and he learns how to basically be a man. Yeah, and it's just it's a very compelling Death story. That was really great, mm-hmm. fantastic night, uh, Green Knight. But uh, or no, he they end up fighting the Green Knight. That right, he has to face the Green Knight at the end. Is that it? Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, sort of. So, like, it, it's. I mean, spoilers, but it's so it, it's actually a trick. So what happens oh, is, right. yeah. So it, it, it's Christmas Eve, and Arthur and his knights are on the table, and the Green Knight shows up. Yes. And he challenges them to a game. Yes. He's like, um, if anyone can land a blow against me, I'll give him hit my axe. But in one year hands, I I get to return the blow. So it's actually a trick. So Gawain messes up by deciding to just behead the guy because he, he gives him the chance. And one year later, he has to show up in the chapel and was thinking, like, well, you know, I'm going to get my, my head chopped off. But he decides to accept it, and the Green Knight just, he's like, oh, offer your head, and he pretends to cut his head off because it's, you know, he's not yeah. actually going to kill him. Yeah. Well, I mean, now you got that one on your desert island for yeah. for good. So, mm-hmm. dang, we'll just keep the hitters going. What's yeah. your fourth? Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Okay, yeah. go. You're gonna yeah. have to fully talk about this one. So you, you, you never, never heard this one? It. Okay, so this this one's very interesting. So it also ties into what we the last voyage, where it was came out in 1922. Jeez. Yeah, it's a German silent film, part of the German expressionism movement. It it's what it is. It's in a a illegally made copy of Dracula. Wow. Where it's instead of Dracula, it's kind of Olaf. You've probably seen it before. It's this, it's, oh, the, it's yeah. the bald guy with the fangs yeah. and the big hands. And they change it so to where when Dracula comes to town, he brings the plague with him. So there's that weird subplot. And so what happened was the film comes out, the makers get sued, um, and it gets put away in storage. And then it almost gets destroyed in the fire. And there was only a handful of copies left. And they managed to save it and restore it. And then I think it was like a couple of decades later where people, it was brought, it was distributed worldwide. And you but want this on your desert island. Yeah. No, it, it, it's also the music because it's called Nosferatu, a uh, symphony of horror. It's a lot of organ music. Wow. A lot of, it's, it's, it's great. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, uh, I, I do like that kind of stuff. Like I went to the Academy Museum yeah. and like, yeah, just, there were so many like movies that were on there that were like. Like, there are movies that you've heard of that you haven't seen, but mm-hmm. the ones that you haven't heard of and haven't seen, yeah. like that, even like, yeah, I ha- probably have seen that. So it probably was in Babylon, like the shot of, like, that would be something that ties in. But, um, yeah, it's always kind of interesting, but it's hard to, yeah, again, just really no, dive I, into I, that. I, I get it. it. It's not a movie for everyone. Did you see that while you were in school or was that a? Um, No, I watched that on my own because cause we talked about gem expressionism when that was where it, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari came in. But it was just one of those movies where I've seen clips of, just like when people talk about like old horror stuff. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, what the hell is that? I decided to watch it. And I was like, and that was, I liked it. I mean, you know, it's it, it's a simple, I mean, it's a silent film. So it, it's simple, but effective. Okay. Yeah. So you got Alien. Yeah. You got The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. The Green, Green Knight. Knight. Nosferatu. Nosferatu. And number five. Pig. 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 Nicolas Cage. Yeah. I need to see it. Yeah, do you need to? I, I, um, Dude, you have a couple movies that came out in the last couple of years. Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, well, it was, you know, I just really, really love them. And it was, I was on the fence about seeing it in theaters. And I decided not to. And I, I really regret that because I watched it when it was on, it was on Hulu. Yeah. And I was just, I was just like, I watched it. And I'm like, this is, this is amazing. Wow. So it's, like yeah, it's synopsis. Uh, yeah, I, I actually don't know anything about it. I'm like, you don't want to like spoil it? Or I mean, I maybe I've heard a thing or two, but I don't think I've. Yeah, well, don't have to spoil it, but okay, just I tell like, me okay. what you love about it. 
I love how it's um so it is a revenge story with the synopsis is Nicholas Nicholas Cage is a retired professional chef living in uh, the Oregon woods with a, with a pig that he uses to hunt truffles, and p- people abduct the pig and he has to go back to Portland to like his old life and try and get the pig back and it's 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 a subversion in the way because he like it's almost like the opposite of John Wick. Hmm. Where instead of mowing everyone down with a handgun, he he sort of disable he takes apart his opponent's like worldview. Hmm. So like he'll he'll like confront people and like he he sort of in a way calls them out on how fake they are. Huh. Like like he meet like he meets for example a former student of his, and he runs this fancy high end restaurant, and they're bragging about their seasonal like oysters or some you know whatever. And he just he and he asked him like like when you worked for me like like what you want to do he's like I wanted to open up like a basically like like a pub yeah he's like but like that 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 doesn't work here and he's just like he's like none of this is real like this food isn't real you're not real like the restaurant isn't real because you're not your heart isn't in it hmm. and it was just, yeah it was just a very it, it's a very beautiful story and I hmm. this, and it's it's set up in different chapters and like. And like I also like the way that it's titled. Like I think the last one is like a baguette, a bird, and a bottle, because mm. like he he uh, makes a meal for someone using those those ingredients. Interesting. So yeah, I know. Like it sounds like I mean Nick Cage has had like somewhat of a resurgence. I know we just dogged on the Dracula movie, but like um, unbearable weight of massive talent is that the one? Yeah, he was in that. But people were really high on him in that one. Yeah, he's he's he was in the Flash. Which you didn't log that one? No, because that was oh spoilers. He was in the Flash. Sorry, I don't I think mean, anyone. I mean, I, I think <laughs> now. I think actually, people knowing that he's in the Flash will help people see the Flash. It, I mean, don't want to spoil why why he's in the Flash. Or I <laughs> love the reason he's in the Flash. So it was he he shows up as an alternative universe of Superman. Yeah, because we see a lot of alternative universes, including yeah. real ones and potential ones. Yeah, so I think. From what, from what I know is there was a Superman movie in the works and he did a test screening and all I know is it involved him giant fighting an alien spider on an yeah. asteroid. So that's what that was a reference He had the to. like longish hair, I think. Yeah, too. he had the long flowing hair. Um, I personally don't see him being Superman. Yeah. Uh, it's just not him. But have you seen Raising Arizona? I have not, no. Yeah, Raising Arizona is pretty good, him in the 90s. And yeah. so then we were, we were, had... National Treasure on during July Fourth, and that oh, movie yeah. is like freaking yeah, so. No, good, yeah, dude. he's, he's like that's another those. one where I'm like, dude, I'm so glad we grew up with that movie. Yeah, <laughs> no, and there's uh, I, I didn't see this one. But Mandy was another one that I heard he did. Mandy. He I did mean, he, did, he was good in Kick Ass. He was the uh, people forget he was Big Daddy or maybe Kick Ass too. Or was what it was. I, I never, I never saw that one, but yeah, that, that's another one that he's yeah. And th- there's one that I watched where it, it's a it's one of those guilty pleasures of mine because like it's not really that good of a movie. It's the color out of space. Hmm. It's like a, the only good Lovecraft adaptation ever to be made, and hmm. it's still like un- painfully mediocre, <laughs> unfortunately. Dang. And he he plays a farmer in that one. So, um, all right. So you got from the top, Alien, Alien, the Lighthouse, the Lighthouse, the Green Knight, Green Knight, Nosferatu, Nosferatu, and Pig, and Pig. A lot of uh, like it doesn't seem like you're gonna laugh like at all. Maybe like a little bit here, no. but I'll you, cry. You get some I, great actors. You get yeah. Sigourney Weaver. Mm-hmm. You get Willem Dafoe. You get Battinson. I'm a big fan of Battinson. Oh yeah. Don't know who's in Nosferatu. Didn't follow any of those I, I, actors. I don't know his his name either, but they're all dead. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. over a hundred years old. You picked a movie that's over a hundred years old. You said 1922. Yeah. Over a hundred years old. Yeah. That's that's yeah. It's a hundred. Never before in the history of <laughs> biopic has anyone selected a movie over a hundred years old so oh, i feel so special julian <laughs> you have made it um well yeah so we're gonna get into oppenheimer and we're gonna get mm-hmm. into christopher nolan here in a second um we'll be right back welcome back to biopic julian you have been a joy to have here on the program um even though you have the craziest desert island i've ever heard Really? Like, no lie. Yeah, like, I mean, like, what's no, like, I'm just, it's a little shocking you don't have any real good feel-good movies there. Like, if I, I was, oh, let me ask you then. Okay. If, if I said, dude, let's put on a feel-good movie, what do you, what's the first one you're going to recommend? Feel-good. I don't, 
like, so like, like, what do you mean by feel good movie? One though? that just makes you smile. Because I don't think you're smiling when you're watching The Green Knight. True. Um, I mean, even it could be laughing, movie. too. Comedy. Step Brothers. Step Brothers. That's good. That's like my like my go to comedy. Step Brothers is yeah. I I gotta rewatch that one. That one's pretty good. Yeah. We've clipped that on the DVM. But yeah. you and I, we went to to go see the movie we're gonna talk about next, Oppenheimer. Now mm-hmm. it's it this has been a movie I've wanted to talk about. I've tried to kind of reset things. It's been a while since we've been going. So I wanted to talk about this movie right away, but I also wanted to see it again. Um, you have now seen Oppenheimer how many times? Three times. Three times. Each each in a, in a different format. Really? So yes. we saw it in 70 millimeter. Yes. Then after you saw it in? I saw it, digi- I think, regular digital screening. Regular. And, regular. I, and I saw it in IMAX. Cool. I saw it in just IMAX second time like a week ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know where to begin talking about this movie. I think we'll just, I'm just going to open the floor. To whatever. I mean, I I know I know what's a good starting point. You can then. <laughs> you know what? I'll let you lead because we're gonna discuss Oppenheimer. We're probably gonna spoil it. It, it is gonna be best if you've seen this movie to maybe enjoy this conversation. But also, I don't know. Well, sh- but we we honestly we give, should we give context then for you who who haven't haven't seen it? Uh, I mean, yeah. Go. I mean, yeah. Go ahead. I'm, so just for con- I, I'm not a World War Two expert, so just. Take what I say about the greatest whole place, but um, so Oppenheimer is based on a biography written by two people, I think from 2005. It's about um, J. Ralph Oppenheimer, the man credited with building the atomic bomb for the United States. That is the gist of it. And it's his personal like struggles throughout like his life, yeah. centered around a hearing in I think 1954 for his security clearance. Yeah. Is like the main like focus. Yeah. Security clearance. Yeah. That's another kind of one of those like, yeah, it's so simple. It, it's a very simple thing. It's like and even Inception, Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan movie. It's very simple. I'm just trying to get into the country. That's, yeah. that's all I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. That's the whole movie's all about. I just, I'm just trying to get in the country. Yeah. But yeah, this guy's just trying to get his security clearance. And there's we learn all the crazy reasons why. But I guess, yeah. How did you? How have you digested this movie? Like, from the moment you saw it, because I think for me, the first time I saw it, I had a lot of excitement on me. Yeah, no, <laughs> And it was, was hard to, like, kind of take it all in, because I was just, like, I was taking it all in. Yeah. You know, so hard to be, like, dude, holy crap, we're watching a Christopher Nolan. Well, I mean, we're well, in a theater packed with people on a Friday. Yeah. And this is sick. Second time, I feel like nice waves coming over me. Yeah. Totally loved it. Well, um, can you can you hear the music? Yeah. 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 Okay. And and honestly, the I know that the dialogue part, people are like, "Oh, dude, you couldn't hear dialogue." Oh, did you not? Did you not get my my reference? No. That? No. That it's it's my it's my favorite sequence in the movie where it's the very beginning where it's his him going through college in Europe, and it's where he stri- he's in, um, I think Oxen Oxenford? No, um, Oxford. Oxford. And he's struggling in the lab, which is um. At the time, see, he's being a. Um, what is it? There's there's two different kind of physicists. There's theoretical physicists, and I can't remember the other kind. But it, it, it involves lab work, and he's just like he's struggling, like he can't sleep, and he, I guess, snaps and decides to poison his his teacher's apple with cyanide. Yeah. Luckily, throws that away, and then he meets um, Kenneth Brog. Kenneth uh, Brown. Yeah, a character. Kenneth Brown. I can't remember his, his name, but he's he says. I mean, in regards to his math not being that good, he's like, it doesn't matter for music, it doesn't matter if you can read the sheet music, it's can you hear the music. Hmm. And he can, hear, he, he can hear the music, which is like my favorite part of the film where he's visualizing the physics in his head. Damn, I thought you were literally asking me if I heard the music in the film. Well, I, I mean, was like, well, dude, there's that. <laughs> of course I did. It was incredible. There's that too, yeah. The, the soundtrack is fantastic. Yeah. But and, and combine that with the visuals of him picturing the physics in his head, which I don't know how he did that. I'm not sure if it was like miniature shots of experiments or it was actual CGI, but it was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, there was lots of uh, coverage around this movie that there wasn't a lot of big use of CGI. Yeah. But I don't know, dude. This movie, like, I'm a, I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan. Like, mm-hmm. I'm total Christopher Nolan 
Like, yeah, dude, <laughs> no one, like whatever. I'm, I'm fanboy. Like, yeah. it, he's incredible. He's maybe the best director of my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, and like in in terms of just movies that are put out, you know, while I'm alive. Yeah. Um, and to me, this movie was him doing everything he's ever done, but like all at once and all masterfully like Mm -hmm. from even like uh the way he told the story bouncing back and forth like it really felt seamless i think it was a little overwhelming at first Mm -hmm. um but like as i went and rewatched his other ones for our top five that we're gonna do Mm -hmm. i i also noticed that like it's he he was getting better at seamlessly telling these stories Mm -hmm. and sometimes yeah you did have to like wait a second you're not going to get it yet you're not going to get it yet oh okay now it's starting to make sense yeah and um but to me in this one he did that perfectly i don't think he did that perfectly in tenant i don't think tenant tenant was disappointing right but like there were yeah all these things and then even memento using the black and white yeah. Um, letting his actors act like this is a such a stacked cast, um, oh, yeah. top to bottom, and each like each actor just kind of gets their moment from um, the Safdie brother who was in the movie, the yeah. you know Russian scientist, to Matt Damon. Surpri- was he was he a Russian or what? Like, what? or he was um Polish? Maybe he was Polish. Yeah. Um, and to yeah Kenneth Branagh showing up. Uh, Matt Damon not being super distracting Matt Damon, but yeah, being like, like... Matt Damon not playing Matt Damon? Yeah, like <laughs> Matt Damon in Interstellar to me was like distracting. I, and I, like and Matt Damon in Air and like Matt Damon is just... He's just he's, Matt he's Damon. Matt Damon. You, know <laughs> like, you know him. And when he was young, he was in Oceans and he was in Departed and Jason Bourne. And it was yeah, like... Yeah, Good Will Hunting. Good Will Hunting. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but there's something about Matt Damon. But he was great in this role. Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh... Um, and then Killian Murphy, of course, like oh. him getting his moment and him like really escaping into that role of Oppenheimer. And he, we've seen him a bunch of times. People who love Peaky Blinders yeah. have really spent a lot of time with this guy. And I think that's what, like Leo's thing is that like only do a few projects because they only know you as a few things. Well, yeah. if you do a bunch, it's like, oh, man, this guy's done everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Killian Murphy, like we've seen him do a lot and he can still become j robert oppenheimer and yeah. like be an awesome character and then of course just visually dude freaking christopher nolan um no, like it's i mean obviously like the end was joking about how like he would actually drop a nuke because he yeah. doesn't use cgi but right. like when when they test the bomb i was waiting for the shockwave like i, I was worried i was gonna jump scare me and like it it almost did when it, yeah. like when it hits because it's so loud yeah yeah mm-hmm. No, it was uh I I just loved it and I thought um like it kind of was I wrote it, it was the first thing I thought of and I wrote it down but like it was kind of it was Christopher Nolan doing all that but also doing his like best Scorsese biopic mm. like yeah like long epic where like your first hour of the movie like we don't even like bring up a bomb like it's it's just it's kind of these breadcrumbs that are getting us there but like it's him going through college and then. Mm. Um, you know, jumping back and forth, figuring out who this Robert Downey Jr. character is. Oh yeah, where I mean, spoilers, but him being the antagonist of like the yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and like, I w- I would he he's not be nominated at like the Oscars yeah. for sure for like supporting actor. Like there was there was no way he's not. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was another one that escaped in his role. I mean, I kind of see Robert Downey Jr. there, but that was. Yeah, it was really well done, mm-hmm. and I don't know. What other thoughts do you have on it? What are my thoughts? I mean, I, to me, it highlighted, like, do, do you know what the McCarthy era was? Like, a little bit? or Like the, yeah, the Cold War. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it was, like, so McCarthy, he was a U.S. senator who claimed that... a history lesson. I, know, is, I, I don't know that much, just, 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 like, a little bit. But it was, um, he claimed to have a list of members of Congress and, like, of, and the government who were communists, who were communists. Because, like, there was a point in time, and you see this in the movie, where the U.S. government was very paranoid that communists were going to have a, they were going to repeat the October Revolution in Russia and take over and, like, kill a bunch of people. Like, that was, like, their fear. And so they, it was, there was a lot of spying, 
wiretapping of phones, like as you saw in the movie, like the only reason they let him run the Manhattan Project is because he was an absolute genius. Yeah. Like if, if he was not as smart as he was, like they would have banned yeah. him immediately. Yeah. Um, and just even like the secu- the security clearance trial, like it was a total sham. Yeah. They're asking him always like it was leading questions and all this other stuff yeah. and his counsel didn't have access to like the yeah, whole binder and, and yeah. his alleged uh like mistress girlfriend was there was rumors that she might have been killed yeah and even th- when they meet uh Casey Affleck's character Bo- um Pash yeah where Matt uh Matt Damon's character which is uh, what's his name you know I can't remember where he explains to me he's like you should not have met this guy cuz like he 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 threatened to take out to take one of your friends out on the boat and they went down and come back. Like, that was the man. Like, that's how much, like, he, this guy did not like com- communists. Yeah. It was... So, like, to me, like, that was another takeaway. Yeah. It was just a, a glimpse into the past and just the paranoia yeah. of the era. Yeah. It's uh, it's cool because even, like, the, uh, I heard some guys uh, on film spotting, they were talking about how, mm-hmm. like, Christopher Nolan kind of jumps into genres, like... You know these the space epic adventure mm-hmm. or um, heist movie with Inception or superhero or um, historic with Dunkirk or whatever like mm-hmm. this was kind of kind of was able to put it all together of just like you we definitely saw um, a dynamic in Killian Murphy of just like being like creating this thing being so moved and then twenty minutes later he's in front of that crowd. And oh. he's reliving the terror, the noise, like like the yeah. way the way he keeps coming back and forth terror. between like yeah. the three people stomping was genius. And wh- wh- having watched this three times and just seeing the on there, and that I'm not sure if the bodies he was seeing were meant to be Japanese or him picturing his co- his friends. Mm. Like, and I, I I don't think it matters. It's just yeah. the point is him coming to terms with the fact that he just made a weapon capable of killing people on a scale that has never been done before. Yeah. Like, and it's just, and I guess tragic, I guess is the only word I can, I can come to think of it. No, yeah, it's, it was, yeah, just kind of a crazy dynamic and it kind of leaves you definitely, like, it does what great movies does and like, leaves you thinking about it days later going like, dang, the cost and like, what actually happened and the generations of people are still, and the fact that it was a like, scientific marvel of a mm-hmm. thing like this was but it's also changed our world too today yeah. no like it's it it leave you leave going like damn like we live in the world that that created and that's yeah i mean not literally not to be too cheesy but i i was just on the way over here i was thinking about that line from me and malcolm in jurassic park where he's like your scientists are so preoccupied about that they could they didn't stop to think about it they should yeah no, where and, and and you see that in the movie to me where at first, everyone's like, let's do this to prove that we can. Yeah. And then once it's done, they're like, we shouldn't use this. Right. Because people are going to die. And it, it's, and it's, um, oh, was it? I can't remember the guy's name, but it, it was the guy he meets in when he's in, I think, Denmark at uh, like the oh. lecture. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I don't want the last 300 years of physics to be a weapon of mass destruction. Yeah. But like, that's what we get. Yeah, and I think it's all—it's also the rise of the military and industrial complex. Yeah, where it's, and the scientists soon realize that if they don't comply with what the government wants, like they get ousted. Yeah, and that's so. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny, and like I've had this thought too about because um I it's funny, but you can't talk about Oppenheimer without talking about Barbie culturally. Yeah. And because they came out the same weekend, we actually did the Barbenheimer double feature. Yeah. We saw Barbie after. Pretty good chaser. I think it was the right move. Yeah. Like, um, I think it was, yeah, we kind of felt the same about Barbie. I thought it was really fun. The first 30 minutes, last hour, I thought was kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. And because it was all over the place, some of those moments felt a little. Yeah, I mean. Spoon fed and and sometimes you know it's 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 broccoli and you don't want to eat broccoli at the movie theaters, but like you're like okay this may be good for me but maybe at the same time it's more. Well, I want to see like an elf, like a Barbie <laughs> movie that's like elf, where it's like yeah. born in the real world and like we kind of get that for a second, but once she enters the real world and, anyways, all I'm gonna say is 
is that it blows my mind what we were talking about with Oppenheimer mm-hmm. that when Barbie came out, when Oppenheimer came out, that people were more outraged about the movie about the doll, which yes, was pushing some things socially. Was more upset about the doll movie than about the movie about a person who killed I you mean know, you know what I mean? Like I'm not surprised like that's all that's like insane to me that like we're like, yeah, this other movie was epic and awesome and this great grand historical story. Wait a second. Pe- generations are still being affected by it. Well, we're going into eating popcorn. And yeah, no, and, and, and like, there is still the question of how necessary was dropping two bombs on right. Japan. Cause when like, the war was, all, was already over, according to the movie, the war yeah, was already over. There's, there's conflicting accounts of Jap- whether or not right. how willing Japan was to surrender. What we do know for sure is Truman dropped the nukes because he wanted to intimidate Russia to show yeah. that like what we did because the Cold War starts right after so World War II was done. Yeah. And yeah, and like the impact it had on, on Japan you can still see today. Like even like especially like their movies, Godzilla, Akira, like yeah. that was shaped because of the dropping of the bombs on Nar- Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Yeah. Like it is Yeah. Sad. The wild like moral dilemma. And it's, um, but it's also the world we live in, and it's something mm-hmm. like you kind of, I don't know, it's something to talk. It's, it's a movie that can, I think, spark conversation with people, and I think that's like, what some of the best movies do. And I think mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan makes some of the best movies, and I think we're gonna go through our top five. Yeah. What? Well, do you have, a, do you have any more last thoughts though on Oppenheimer, a, or a rating? <laughs> I gave it. I gave it five out of five. Five out of five. Like, I was. I felt I felt brave enough to where I'm like I I could find zero flaws with this movie. I love that you said you got to feel brave to put a five. <laughs> it's good. That <laughs> means you don't throw it around. No, I I, I don't. Liam I don't throws him around. around. Liam mm. throws him around. Yeah. Anyways, no, I was yeah. Th- there's very few movies where I get five out of five. Like I have to be, I have to either really like it or just know enough about it, like the craft, where I'm like I'm not giving this anything more than a five. Yeah. Dang. So, all right. Um. I gave it a four and a half. Okay. Probably like four point seven. Why? Um, I mean I th- I think some pacing stuff, okay. honestly. I think there were times where it was like, oh uh, and, and dude, there were a lot of characters popping in and out. That is I think it does benefit on a second viewing. And I don't always know if that's a good or a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because if eventually you get on board, um, but ultimately just the spectacle of it and the fact that, yeah, I haven't gone back and seen movies in theaters a lot in the last couple of years because that's, again, time and money. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this one I felt like I really wanted to see, especially see it in IMAX. We saw it 70 millimeter. Um, well, I mean, it's, uh, I, I think we're really, 70 millimeter is just is an IMAX without the sound. But there were, like, certain shots that in the 70 millimeter kind of looked better than the IMAX. Like, the w- there were w- anytime he was like wearing his hat mm-hmm. and the light was coming in like through a window yeah or it was like um when he pulls up to the college that shot he mm-hmm. pulls up to the college and it's like this camera that backs up on him and you, he's like just in wonder looking up at it and it's like his new play uh, it just it looked so crisp and gorgeous on that 70 millimeter but four and a half um Maybe it maybe it's in my top five. I don't know, but here's how we do top fives: okay. is um, start five, go down to one. We'll trade one a piece. Mm-hmm. If I say one that is higher up, yeah, on yours. So if I'm like at five, I'm gonna say insomnia, and that's your number one. You're gonna say whoa. We're not gonna talk about it until it gets to the higher position. That is is that the one. With- Robin Williams? Yeah. Okay. But that is a Christopher Nolan movie. He has yeah. 11 movies. I have not seen the following. I have, I have not seen Somni. I haven't seen anything. I've seen M- Memento. I haven't seen Somni. Anything before that, I have not seen. Okay, yeah. It's following. It's like, yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't seen like his like short films or anything. Yeah, right, right. So I think we're on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, But you understand. So if I say one and you're like, oh. But if it's also your same number, mm-hmm. then we can talk I mean, about it. I actually made, I made two lists. I made my list and then what I thought was in terms of popularity. All right, we're like going to go with your list, though. Okay. And then popularity, we can... Yeah, we can talk about later. We can, it's we fine. can talk about later. Yeah. But uh, let's start with your number five Christopher Nolan movie. And also, like, how did you take this list? Did you think of the best movie or the most... Because I took it as the... I don't know. Well, I did it on personal feelings for me. Cool. 
So go. number five for me is Interstellar. Number five, Interstellar. Cool. Yeah. Not on my list. Not on my top five. It's not? All right. No. So yeah. go on. I watched it last week. Like, you know, like why? Like, yeah, what? why is it in your top five? Why is it five? Because five is a tough spot because it's like yeah. you could sub in some other ones. Or is, um, what did you like about this one? I mean, I I did enjoy like the space epic aspect yeah. of it. It was just... It just it just didn't quite make it for me. Like the yeah. whole like love transcends time thing yeah. was. I think I'm like I just I I just, I just couldn't get into it. Um, and I don't know. It was just yeah. there was just certain parts, but the, the, there's certain shots I love where it's yeah. like the black hole sequence was spectacular. Matthew McConaughey does a great job, and so was Anne Hathaway and Jessica uh, Chastain, lover. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was just it just didn't quite make it there for me. I feel like it could have been just better all right yeah so i got my number five it's pretty pretty easy okay memento memento top five memento. okay yeah you not in your top five no okay i can respect it i watched it again this week um or two weeks ago mm-hmm. um and dude there is just no movie like that movie like i think that's like fair to say like mm-hmm. it, it of course the storytelling is berserk it's short term memory. It's only like literally four minute scenes yeah. and just stacked on top of each other. I also recently watched um Richard Linklater's debut film and I watched Wes Anderson's debut film. Which um, was um um so Oh bo- was it Bottle Rocket? Bottle Rocket. Okay. And um it was oh my gosh. Stalker. Sta- uh Slacker. Yeah. Slacker. I've, I've, I've not seen Bottle Rocket. I've not seen Slacker. Bottle Rocket no. and Slacker. And both of those movies are also kind of bonkers. Mm-hmm. Kind of like crazy. But it made those directors get their next movie that was a little more recognizable. And then, like, because I think that ended up getting him dazed and confused, which is an awesome movie. Yeah. And then Bottle Rocket went from um, the the high school one that he did. With uh, Jason uh, Schwartzman, Rushmore, Rushmore, mm-hmm. which was great, my my probably my favorite Wes Anderson movie. Okay, Memento is that for Christopher Nolan that it was so ambitious, it was like kind of like Whiplash too in terms of just like, dude, I'm gonna go crazy ambitious with this debut, kind of give you something that you really haven't seen before, mm-hmm. and I think that's what makes Memento so special. It's not a perfect movie. There are definitely like. Some parts that you kind of just overlook, and I think we'll get that as we talk more about Christopher Nolan's why Interstellar's not on my list. Yeah. He's like, I think sometimes he shoots hard, and sometimes he kind of go, okay, like sure. This is this is the mark a little bit. Tenet, I think Tenet was just n- was a really good big complex, like or er, complex idea, but if people can't grasp it, dude, it's just like yeah, they like, can't grasp it simply. Like I don't know. I, I watched, Memento, you yeah. end up picking up on it, and it's really cool to mm-hmm. then be like, holy crap, okay, I get it now. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. And you, you can now watch it forwards on certain ways, and apparently that's another crazy experience. So just like the everything around this movie and just how ambitious he was so young, because mm-hmm. I think like any young filmmaker would think, like, I got to make something simple, something I can just do real quick for well, my first yeah. movie. I think, well, in a way, Memento, is, is it's simple. It's just it's complex in, in how he... It's it's edited. It's, it was laid out. Yeah. Yeah. So like it's like a very small cast, probably like five people. Yeah. Mostly guy Pierce in a, in a hotel room. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy. <laughs> uh. But yeah, Memento is my number four. Okay. Or that was my number five. So it's my number four. My number four is um the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. Yeah. Whoa. I'm saying whoa. Yeah. So we're not talking about it yet. Okay. So we're gonna go to my number four. All right. Which is Oppenheimer. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> is it not on your top five. No, it is. It is. Okay, so. But it's it's it's, it's higher up. <laughs> higher up. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna see whoa. Okay. You are telling me whoa? Yeah, whoa. Whoa. So whoa means stop, dude. We're not gonna talk about it yet. Okay, so okay. then my number three. Okay. I think. Yeah, my number three is the Dark Knight. Okay. So we can talk about the Dark Knight. Yeah. Uh, dude, the Dark Knight is. One of the greatest movies of my lifetime. Okay. Like the one of the best movies that came out while I'm alive. 
Mm-hmm. I um I love it so much. It to me it's not the most Christopher Nolan movie, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's him doing superhero movies and Batman movies. Amazing. He gets one of the greatest performances ever out of Heath Ledger. Yeah. Um rest in peace. Like oh my gosh, like just the sound design of that movie too mm-hmm. and the like the score is pretty insane. Um love The Dark Knight. The third act falls apart. Batman, not the strongest Batman movie. Um, the Dark Knight is epic, quotable. One thing Christopher Nolan does really well, I think, is what I noticed, is like to make a good movie and to make a complex movie like his, you need scene after scene after scene after scene to be fast paced, interesting, move, 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 tell me something interesting, do something interesting. And in The Dark Knight, that happens. Um, and in all these great movies it happens but there's some where it like falls apart and some scenes get a little slow and some are like wait what are we doing here and we're like why are we spending so much time on rachel like (laughs) like rachel is not like and christopher nolan does not do love interests very well like that's definitely a a flaw of his female Mm -hmm. characters I, i can make that argument either way but yeah spending too much time on rachel here for batman like well, I, it was because I think it was, in his defense, I think it was because she she dies and like was supposed to care about her. I think right. like, but we, but we did we no, I don't well, think we did. Harvey so. Harvey Dent did. Yeah, it was <laughs> more just like like the fact that it was more impressive that like oh damn the Joker pulled that off rather than oh I feel so sad for <laughs> Batman. We should feel so sad. We feel bad. We feel sad for Peter Parker all the time. We always feel sad. Yeah. For that guy. We don't. We feel sad when the pearls are flying off of. Um, Bruce Wayne's mom's, you know well, that that's when we get sad. But Dark Knight, we didn't care about Rachel. At all. Maybe it's because he switched casting ca- ac- actresses in between movies. Yeah. I can't remember who played her in Batman Begins, but um, what's her name? Tom. Ha- yeah. Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes. Yeah. Then Maggie John Holmes. But I mean, it, it, it's it's not that noticeable because she's not that big of a character. But dude, it didn't matter. It, even if it was Margot Robbie, that would have. Not worked. Marco Robbie was in Dark Knight. That would be amazing. Dude, that would be, that'd be <laughs> kind of crazy. Yeah. Dude. Has Marco Robbie done Christopher Nolan yet? I don't think so. That's no. That she would hasn't. be Barbara. She, she's though. done Wes Anderson. She's done Wes Anderson. She's done Scorsese. Yes. She's done Wes Anderson. Yeah, she was in Asteroid City. I just I saw that one. Okay, uh, she 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 plays. You know when um Agent Burry's okay. uh okay. what? Anyway, sorry. Uh, it's. Adrian Brody, he's in on like the back deck, and he's talking away oh, across right. the alleyway. That, that's it her. is her. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Um, back to back to Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Yeah, dude. Honestly, like the the, the that's really its only flaw. Like, otherwise, you, the yeah, just it's not a good Batman movie, but it is just an epic movie, and it's it's no, it's about. Christopher Nolan displaying stunts on another level, dude. The bank heist is so dope. The truck flipping over, even yeah, just the the bat pod turning or the Batmobile turning into the mm-hmm. um, the yeah. motorcycle and, and the uh, hit me scene and the yeah the hit me scene dude mm-hmm. the freak and do any scene with the Joker like even the the funeral for the captain or whatever then it just turns into chaos, mm-hmm. um, all of it like and Aaron Eckhart as um, Harvey uh, Dent as Harvey Dent dude. He, I feel so bad for him every time I watch that movie because I'm like, dude, this guy's killing it. But it's really hard because you're up against Heath Ledger and honestly, Christian Bale's Bruce well, Wayne is pretty good. Um, and just all those other Michael, Michael Caine. Yeah. Good, good, go, go. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's, that's my number three. Okay. Yeah. Not higher for you though? Why isn't it higher for you? Uh, it was just other movies that I think are just. That I, I I just enjoyed more because I would guess him. I would guess that the Dark Knight's on a lot of people's number. Yeah, one. and it's 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 just always because in terms of like cultural impact and popularity, like it's yeah. like it's it's a very broad audience. Cultural impact for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. I've posted on the DBN's Instagram a few times, but the the marketing oh, campaign yeah. for that thing was insane, and I mm-hmm. honestly don't remember it that much. I feel like I remember seeing the Joker stuff. I never I. I never saw it. But, dude, I was 13 when that movie came out, and mm-hmm. it was, like, I was a little freaked out. Like, it was a little scary. Yeah. And then, yeah, I don't know. So, 
Number two? My number two is the pr- a prestige. Not in my top five. All right. All right. Go on. Uh-huh. Um, I just, it's I me. Mean, it's top it, two, dude. You this tell me why this movie's better than The Dark Knight. That's what I wanted you to do. It's it's uh, well, it, it also has Christian Bale in it, but it also has Hugh Jackman and David Bowie. And David Bowie. Yes. Yeah, which I didn't realize till a couple months back. And Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> yes. Um, I just, I am a and Michael Caine. I am a sucker for the time period, which is yeah, it is pretty cool. I think like the. Early 1900s, yeah, I believe. Um, with like the, I love the rivalry between the two. How yeah. he just cannot beat the simple trick of the disappearing man. I will say that. I mean, this, that's the other, the other um, genre that he jumped in is a period piece. Like yeah. this is a, such a unique. It, I was even thinking. I'm like, what time is this? I I kind of can't tell, but it kind of does matter. But I get it. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then just yeah, the bitter rivalry is pretty great. Yeah, and then just how he, Hugh Jackman, goes to such a length to talk to Nikola Tesla, to basically use almost actual magic to duplicate himself, and then kills his clone, and it's still not enough. Yeah, like <laughs> it, it's the first movie that ever made me gasp out loud. Like mm-hmm. that's what I give this movie credit for is yeah. that I was. Couldn't figure it out the whole time. And I was just like, what is going on? And I'm like, like he, they keep outdoing each other. And then I finally was like, oh, man, Hugh Jackman won. I really remember feeling that, being like, dude, he did it. He, well, he, he's, he has his kid now, and he walks away. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. As he gets the kid, and you're like, oh, my gosh, he won. And well, then he didn't. He just, didn't He didn't win the moral battle. <laughs> well, no, and he ended up dying anyway. Yeah. But it it's funny to rewatch. Sorry, but yeah, spoilers for the prestige. It's it's been spoilers out. for the prestige ahead. It's I'm gonna yeah. edit that. Okay. Um, so yeah, no, it's crazy because I think this is one of those like I think the the switching to real magic is the leap that I'm like, dude, no, I'm not on board with that. No, you can't you can't do this. The whole they were outsmarting each other. Mm-hmm. And then one guy went, all right, well, I'm going to go, like, did rock, paper, scissors, lightsaber. And it's like, dude, you can't do that. And, of course, then it does end up, you know, paying off in the end. Well, um, but. Like, I think the, the 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 point of the movie is, like, you're in the scene where they see it's the it's the fishbowl act. Yeah. Where, I'm not sure if they say it, but it's, it's Im- I think it's implied where the, that guy is not old. Like, he is, yeah. he is either young or really, really strong, he has to fake it all the time. Like, he yeah. can't drop the act, which is what Christian Bale has to do with, with, with his twin brother. Yep, he has his one act. He, away. he dedicates his heart and soul to this one act as a as, as magician because, like, that's what it takes. Yeah. The, um, yeah, no, it's, it's funny because I remember even um, culturally The Sixth Sense mm-hmm. has a twist ending that is talked about all the time. It's been spoofed. People always bring it up in yeah. conversation and it was a movie that i remember i asked a, a film critic once i was like hey is it worth seeing this movie even though i know the, the twist and i know what's going on the whole time yeah he's like no it's actually still or he said like no it's actually a great movie like even mm. with the twist and i was like that doesn't really make sense and i saw it and i was like yeah that, that was good but it would have been way better with the twist the prestige is just as good with the twist mm-hmm. knowing it like yeah because then you see all of the breadcrumbs that were there um, like, yeah, the the wife being like, y- you love me today, but you don't love me. Mm-hmm. Like some days you mean it, some days you don't. Um, yeah, like whenever she tells him, like, oh, I I'm pregnant, and he goes, oh man, I wish Fallon was here. Mm. And it's like, huh, mm. that's not the guy who wanted to know that information. Mm-hmm. And um. Or whenever he's at, the, he shows up to the funeral to the girl, and he says, "Orden, what knot did you tie?" And he says, "Honestly, I don't know." Mm. And that was probably true, if it was the brother that didn't tie the knot that Wait, night. That 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 was for the was it the water tank. That was the water tank at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, they she ties him up, and and I think yeah. So like, that's how I get like. I mean, we're almost at the top of the list here, but yeah, like. Interstellar for me, honestly, and sadly, the prestige. T- 
tenant were just these kind of risks that didn't ultimately like those ideas didn't fully land with me and it wasn't that i didn't get it it's that like all right, i get it but like i don't feel like that i feel like it just breaks the rules too much like mm -hmm. interstellar i'm like dude wait so what are we doing now like okay we just lost 24 years but now wait now you're in a black like what mm -hmm. and like i love that idea that you're going back and you're helping and that's that's so sick and i love time travel but i'm like Gosh, when do these rule? When do we start getting some rules here <laughs> that make sense and can be? Because I think, I mean, with my number one movie, like that's what happens best. But okay, yeah. yeah. Did we did we go with your number two? No, no. My number two. Well, your number two is the Prestige. Yeah. So my number two is Dunkirk. Okay. Dunkirk, not in your top five. Wait, wait. Did, did we skip three? Let's see that. No. Wait, well, yeah, did you do three? Yeah, we didn't. Because like, mine's, cause mine's Dunkirk. <laughs> wait, wait. Dark Knight. Oh, 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 I, I think what happened was it was, um, I did Whoa, and I think that messed oh, it up. Oh, that so, might have messed it up. My bad. That's Dang. on me. Dang, your number three was Dunkirk. Yes. So I would have woed you anyway. So it's okay. Yeah. This is where we would have talked about it. I had yeah. a higher seed. Okay. Um, Dunkirk. Dunkirk, Dunkirk. I loved Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. Because I think like that was one that I walked into it, and I remember thinking like, "Oh, it's a Christopher Nolan movie." The last two we've gotten were Interstellar, Dark Knight Rises, and freaking Inception. Like, wait, did, did he make Inception before, or after the Dark Knight? Uh, after. After okay. After, um, and so it was like, oh my gosh, this guy is like, it's killing. Like it. this is gonna be a wild movie, and it was a very simple war movie. Yes. Very simple and well executed. Not long at all. Not long at all. Under, I think it's under an hour 45. Um, really? Yeah. It is. Huh. Maybe it's like an hour 50 um, right in there, but it's quick. It's concise. And it's like nonstop going, going, going. It's that stacking scenes so well that like you're just. There, there's one mission dialogue does not matter dialogue is not what he's great at either mm -hmm. but it was just this great big skept spectacle of getting home and kind of all the different aspects of it yeah no it was th to me i didn't notice at the time until i watched the video where it's edited out of sequence yeah like i didn't like it i i didn't catch on to that but it didn't, it didn't film me off the movie either no oh, yeah and i thought it was it did a very good job of showing it, it being respectful and showing the complexity of the soldiers where you have Harry Styles and his group of friends and how they who was fantastic yeah great phenomenal job how they leave a guy behind he's like sorry mate like you're not part of the crew and and my favorite shot is Tom Hardy lands yeah behind enemy lines and he has to burn yeah. the plane and it's yeah. a shot of him it's a silhouette of the plane yeah. he's just staring at it I'm like yeah. that was Gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah, so many good shots. Even that yeah. one that was in the trailer, but like of all the soldiers starting to look up. Yeah. And it's you see helmets, helmets, face, oh. face, 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 and it's like, it looks like the the minions. You could see that animated or CGI'd, mm -hmm. but it was like all these just dudes, mm. soldiers, could just you, like human. Like you were stuck on the beach. And you, what you have? Where where are you gonna go? What are you gonna no do? Go. This is it. No one. The, the Nazis could just mow you down from the yeah. sky and like it it is definitely a, a an anti-war war movie of just like everything the soldiers go through mm -hmm. from yeah even that opening shot with the flyers flying around and them walking through that little town i don't know if that's the opening shot but it's it right is. in the beginning yeah um but yeah dude and then seeing the civilians like killian murphy you know getting his time too yeah, he's, like yeah. um and yeah it was just I think it's his like kind of best craft, well, most well crafted movie, and mm -hmm. like, and it was still Christopher Nolan in terms of like you think of that Dark Knight Rises opening sequence with the oh plane, my God. which yeah. is I I loved. Are you, are you saying oh God, good or no? Bad? Great, yeah, Kidding? no, but like that. But then it's like, dude, let's make a whole war movie out of <laughs> shit like that, mm -hmm. and use very little CGI. And let's go for it. And yeah. it was just really well done and a really simple, like, man, these guys are getting home. And then you really get a triumphant 
home scene with, on the train yeah. with the bottles and and reading the newspaper. Oh, yeah, because like and the music swelling and the ticking. Like yeah. I loved all of it. Um, and I think yeah, he jumped back a little bit mm-hmm. and with his time, and he made it like his thing. But um, yeah, cool. Love Dunkirk. That was my number two. All right. So now we're at one. So let's yes. let, let's recap. Five. I had memento. I had the. Uh, I had Interstellar. Interstellar. Mm-hmm. Um, four. Was me. Mm-hmm. I had Oppenheimer. Okay. Whoa. I had, I, I I had Dark Knight. You had Dark Knight at four. Yes. And then my th- that was my three. And then your, your four, three. Your your fourth was Oppenheimer. Oppen- okay. My third was Dunkirk. Dunkirk. My third was The Dark Knight. Okay. Two. I had The Prestige. Prestige. And I had Dunkirk. So that leaves your number one movie is Oppenheimer. Yes. <laughs> wow. Why Why is it your number one? Why is it his best movie? Because I think this is the first Christian Nolan, Christian Nolan where I went in completely hyped opening day. Yeah. And I... F- and I was completely mesmerized by it, and I yeah. could find. I tried my hardest. I couldn't find, for me, a flaw in like the movie. Yeah, so, that's it. Yeah. No, I love that. I think it was. It's cool. Yeah. Even um, being at the theater that day, like being there for Barbenheimer, living out the meme dream, as we said, um, it was like cool to be a part of that to see a full theater. Like I remember being a kid, and in the summer in Arizona, it's like 110. The best thing to do on Saturday <laughs> is. To yeah, be in a pool or watch a movie. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, like seeing a full theater, people excited th- to see Barbie, to see Oppenheimer, to be at an Oppenheimer screening mm-hmm. three weeks in on a Monday night, and it was a full theater, and that seventy millimeter IMAX in Hollywood or mm-hmm. in Universal, where you know how there's only a couple of the theaters that yeah. have that, mm-hmm. it's still full. Like, and okay. we're in August. And it's like, what this movie's done, too, is like, keeps it in high regard for me, too. Like, it was just, yeah, no, it's, I was so hyped. And it was I honestly g- delivered, dude. The, the score was epic. The acting was fantastic. Um, I know, I, I know people, some people complain, like, people who don't like no one say he's pretentious. Like, sure, I, I know people say that. I'm like, but watching this, it was refreshing. Yeah. Because, this is not a franchise, and he is one of the few directors left that whose name sells. Yeah, like very other few directors can like say that. Yeah. So. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think it was like. It was. It was just a dope, dope craft. Mm-hmm. But I think Christopher Nolan's number one movie. Okay. Do you know what? I'm. I think, but let's just say it. Inception. Okay, yeah, that's what I was, what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, dude, I watched it again, and for a while, honestly, Dunkirk was one, mm-hmm. but I rewatched Inception. And I'm like, no, man, this is this is a flawless movie to me as well. And yeah. like to me, this was a, a very complex idea made made simple enough. And I remember, dude, when this came out, and I was however old, I think I was 15. Mm-hmm. I remember I saw it like five times. Um, like I loved this movie because it was like it didn't make sense, and then suddenly you're like, "Holy crap!" Like yeah. this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And it's like regarded like some people were were comparing it to like The Matrix, just in terms of like it was this groundbreaking, groundbreaking, uh, yeah, idea, mind bending, like um, way like world building, whatever. Uh, but like it doesn't get that type of regard, um, which is to me crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's visually amazing. We get to see like dope landscapes. Like we get to see Christopher Nolan go to the snow, and we're hitting, we're ripping yeah. snowmobiles. And, like the city that folds in on itself. Yeah, the city that folds in, like the explosions, the like him falling into the bathtub, and yeah, ultimately the story was like. I heard the film spotting guys, I referenced them again, but they talked about Killian Murphy being the heart of Inception. And I was like, the heart, that's kind of weird. But it's his brain that you're in. And you're getting him to come to this conclusion, which like at first felt seedy, of like, and it is I mean, seedy. I, I, I'm honest, I, like, I watched it, I understood it, but I don't 
remember a plot to this movie at well, all. Yeah. Well, th- I mean, their goal is is they're trying to plant an idea into this guy's head, Robert Fisher, Killian Murphy, yeah. to disband his father's company as, after he died. Okay. But, like, they had to put it in his brain. Yeah. They had to go deep enough. Um, and it's Killian Murphy, and, like, they have to convince him when they're in his brains that they're on, they're, they're on his side so that his subconscious doesn't turn yeah. in on him. And mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it's one where... He took some crazy, crazy ideas and made a crazy set of rules in this crazy world, and just it was so well executed. And mm-hmm. it was, yeah, uh, amazing cast. Score was maybe one of his best. Um, yeah, just like I think Leo actually really, even like the fact that Leo's done a Christopher Nolan movie, like it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to me too. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was like, I think pre Wolf of Wall Street or right around that time too, where yeah. like he was just pumping out Django and chain and all these good movies. But he wore this really, really well of like being someone who was just tortured and in a battle against himself, literally <laughs> his subconscious like showing up and you learn about these demons as you go along. Mm-hmm. And then you realize, yeah, dude, this guy, the reason he doesn't do certain things is because he's afraid he's going to let his subconscious take over. And it's just like just so mind bending and honestly so well done. And it's the most Christopher Nolan movie because it is this crazy idea. I, I love, you know, the way he's telling these historic yeah. uh, movies. But I just think he's at his best. Even, like, I will actually watch Interstellar more maybe than I'll watch Oppenheimer going forward. Or, like, The Prestige. Because those are, like, really fun. He also can really do that, like, the magician moments. Mm-hmm. Um even like we didn't talk about insomnia, but that's actually a kind of a decent noir movie. It's just like kind of clunky. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, Al Pacino and Robin Williams, mm-hmm. not on our top five. Also, no. Batman Begins, maybe the best Batman movie of all time. I would I would not say that. The no. best, well, the Batman might be. No. Yeah. <laughs> but Batman Begins well, at, would probably be number at the two. Time. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, at the time it was, and like. Yeah, it was still a really, really great movie. And if I'm going superhero movies, like that's high up on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Batman Begins. Dark Knight Rises actually like is a good, I'll watch Dark Knight Rises more than I'll probably watch Oppenheimer for sure, dude. Cause it's because Tom Tom Hardy is Bane. It's well, it's <laughs> dope. Yeah, it's just dope movie. But he he has hits across the board, and I can't wait to see what he continues to do because it's like as film has just like grown and you've gotten to do crazier and crazier things and things look sharper and sharper he's just kept pushed it t- kept pushing it too yeah now i want to see him do inception but practical you know really <laughs> send the city you know <laughs> that's that's what's next yeah. um he, you could probably do it with like miniatures somehow. oh yeah totally it's possible do some old school trickery um all right, well, dude, thanks for coming on. Uh, I appreciate it. You killed it. Mm, thank um, you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad we could do this. Uh, do or some of your other favorite directors, I guess, before we go. I'm glad we did a director. I don't know that we've ever done a director list My on Biopic. Direct- I mean, other than Robert Eggers, I don't think there's anyone that I really follow. Hmm. Like, I don't, like, I mean, like, like, I like Wes Anderson, but I'm not like a, like a, yeah. I'm not like a big fan of his, though. Yeah. Do um, you would you do you think you would rather s- you would see a movie more for a director or for an actor? For a director. Okay. I mean, like I I wouldn't like th- this times where I'll see a movie. Like if it's like, do you just see this Tarantino movie? Would you be like, oh yeah? Yeah, because it's Tarantino. Yeah. But like, yeah, I, I would I would do it more for the the director than than the actor. Yeah. All right. So. Well, that's fresh. Yeah. I like uh, Richard Linklater. I don't know who that is. <laughs> School of Rock. You need to yeah okay I I yeah I've seen I've seen School of Rock. You need School of Rock on your Desert Island. Do I? I'm gonna send it with you because not, your Desert Island freaks me out, <laughs> and I will <laughs> not be coming to visit your well, island. Wait, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be so grim, dude. I feel like you're gonna be so just like, no, you. I guess no, that fits you. I mean, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, you were so okay, down, fine, fine. dude. I'll add on, I, I, add, I just want you to smile on the can island. I, can I add the Step Brothers in as like a number six? Yeah, but I'm going to... Yeah, you can have that, brothers. I'm going to keep okay. School of Rock, then. Okay. All right. Thanks, Julian. 